नमस्ते वेलकम बैक टू रियल टाइम डिजिटल सिग्नल प्रोसेसिंग कोर्स लास्ट क्लास वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट डिस्क्रीट कोसाइन ट्रांसफॉर्म इन वन डी हाउ वी आर गोइंग टू रिकन्स्ट्रक्ट द टू डी फॉर्म सो टुडे वी विल कंटिन्यू डिस्क्रीट कोसाइन ट्रांसफॉर्म सो एज वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग इन द प्रीवियस क्लास एज आई सेड फ्रॉम वन डी डी सी टी वी रिकन्स्ट्रक्टेड फॉर टू डी डी सी so today we'll see how we can do the uh, that is inverse of 2d dct how we are going to implement it so forward dct what we had seen the thing so we know that uh, y is given as c into c x uh, transpose into uh, a transpose what we'll be taking it so this is x transpose what we have it here and then the transpose of it will be giving as uh, uh this way what is it y is equal to c into x into c transpose what we can write it since c is an orthogonal what we had seen in the last class so we can solve for x using the fact that uh, the inverse of it c inverse what it is going to be equal to c uh, transpose basically what we have assumed it we have shown because of the orthogonal uh, property so therefore what happens to this it will be equivalent to c transpose y into c so how we are going to reconstruct this image in uh, mathematical terms let x is equal to x i j be a matrix of n squared real numbers and y will be y k l be the 2d dct of x what we will be taking it and we know the a not coefficient is going to be 1 by root 2 and a k is going to be 1 for k greater than 0 then what is our uh, p and s comma that is uh, comma t going to be represented as in the 2d 2 by n is our uh, scaling factor k will be going from 0 to n minus 1 uh, that is the size of our uh, uh, matrix and uh, because it is a 2d so i'll be having a double summation so yk l into ak into al so into cos k 2 s plus 1 into pi divided by 2 n into cos l 2 j plus 1 into n by 2 n so this is how our 2d um, um, dct is going to be represented and we say that the satisfied pn uh, l comma j equal to uh, x i j for i comma j is varying from 0 to n minus 1 so how we are going to do the reconstruction of this so the new matrix and then what we show is the compressed image here so we have these are the values what it is available and then this is the image what it has been compressed to okay so can you make the difference between the original because i said this is a compressed image so in the next one we'll be comparing with original and then compressed image so how much difference you are going to make out between the two what you can look at it so as you can see that uh, here uh, you will be seeing the little bit of difference in the thing here it is white whereas here what you are seeing is as white and then here you have seen that all of them have Uh, white in the thing that is after compression what we are looking at it so that was uh, uh, this thing what is it black and white patches what you had seen the difference between the thing now we will see the image basically so we have the original lena image and this is the compressed image so is it possible for you to find the difference minute difference so if you are too good enough you can find it difference between the two so what is it we have discussed about the linear quantization in previous classes so we will not zero the bottom half of the matrix so that is idea is to assign fewer bits of memory to store information in the lower right corner of the dct matrix previous quantization what we did was a uh, lower that is off diagonal uh, below that what we have made everything as zero so here instead of making it zero number of bits allocated for this values is going to be made less 
so that we can have the uh, method of linear quantization included in it. So, now how we are going to do that? So, use the quantization matrix basically Q. So, what is it? Q k i is 8 p into k plus l plus 1 for 0 less than or equal to k comma l which is less than or equal to 7. So, we say that p is called the last parameter and it is going to act like a knob to control compression. So, the greater p is the more you compress the image. So, p can vary from 1 to whatever value you are going to take it. So, if you look at it uh, the quantization matrix p uh, multiplied with 8 that is 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 56 and then 64 are the values. So, if you take 8 as the thing in the first row then you will be seeing that 16, 24 what you will be seeing it. This is the multiplication of what you will be seeing is 8 what you are going to assume as the Q matrix. So, that means to say you will uh, divide uh, your uh, uh, DCT uh, value with respect to this matrix. So, that whichever is low values you will be seeing that they become very small and then you can represent uh, them with uh, fewer bits. As you can see that uh, one each entry in the DCT matrix by the quantization matrix. So, this is our DCT matrix and this is our quantization matrix. So, what we are going to do is uh, divide each element by each of these values. Okay. The first one is our DC which is going to be divided by 8. So, what happens it will be when p is equal to 1 this becomes minus 38. Fine. So, you can compute and then cross verify whether you are getting it correctly or not. Okay. So, the next one is uh, 210 is going to be divided by 16. So, you will be seeing that is the 13 value. So, you will be seeing uh, for the rest of the values automatically lot of them have got zeros and you will be seeing that there are few coefficients which are uh, greater than 0 are left on this and then here uh, what you will be seeing it is few of them in the what we call it as this is the uh, DC coefficient, these are the few AC coefficients on the top corner what, uh, what is left. So, when I use p is equal to 4, so what happens to that? Can you guess that? When p is equal to 1, what we had the first one was 8 and 16. So, whereas when p is equal to that is uh, this is p is equal to 1, when uh, p is equal to 4, what will be the value of it? So, you can see that this becomes 32 and so on. Okay. You can multiply with the thing and then you will be seeing that minus uh, whether you are going to go it is easier to do minus 9 into your 32 whether it belongs to uh, whatever value you want to get is minus 3 not 4. So, So, are we getting it or you can do minus 3 not 4 divided by 9 that will be the easiest way of uh, representing it. What is the p value what I have chosen? So, approximately as I am putting it, it is 32. Okay. So, you eliminate the thing only retain the integer values. So, you can see that compared to this the value has got quite reduced. So, number of bits to represent this is very a uh, fewer bits. So, can you guess how many bits I need it? Because I can go 0 to 15 with 4 bits fine whereas, minus 38 means I can I have to go to the power of 2 always. So, 64 is the maximum what I have to represent. So, which I will be requiring how many bits can you compare here in this case. So, 2, two to the power of 6 is 64 I need 6 bit. So, 6 bits to represent this value. So, I have reduced by 2 more bits in this case. So, it depends on 
how much detail I want to retain. So, by using p is equal to 4 whether I can uh, do with that is what, what it says Th there are 14 terms left in y in the case of p is equal to 1 whereas, uh, in the new p is equal to 4 we are ref left with only 10 terms. So, 4 terms have come down in the thing and then the number of bits representation for this is also reduced. So, can you see now uh, after doing that p is equal to 1 and then p is equal to 4. So, what are the differences you are making out between the two? That is what one has to consider and then see what kind of uh, quantization matrix uh, you want to use it to represent your output. So, you will be seeing uh, using the linear quantization with respect to p is equal to 1 and then p is equal to 4. So, how uh, you are uh, changing the thing you can see here by gray value it has gone to completely white and then some of them some of it what you can uh, uh, find the difference. But coming to the image uh, you may you have not noticed p is equal to 1 later on we will see with p is equal to 4 how much difference we are going to get it. So, in terms of memory storage what we will look at it. So, the original image what we had it 1 byte that is 8 bits per pixel what we wanted it to be represented. So, the amount of memory needed was 8 into 8 that is uh, a block is basically 8 into 8 square what we wanted that is uh, 5 12 bits what we want for this block 8 into 8 into 8 bits per uh, uh, pixel. So, that is how we will be needing 5 12 bits. So, doing the linear quantization p if we do not use any of the value of p then we need 5 12 bits and the number of bits per pixel what we need it is 8. Whereas, if we use p is equal to 1 then total number of bits what we will be having is only 249 you can go back and then check in one of the cases and then number of bits per 6 pixel what we need is 3.89. So, like that a 2 and then 3 you will be seeing it that is total bits in p is equal to 2 is 191 whereas, in 3 it is 147. So, you will be seeing that if we use p is equal to 3 if we are not going to lose much of the information then only 2.3 bits per six pixel what we need it to represent it. So, this is how number of bits and then our memory storage is going to come down. We have seen the JPEG imaging. So, what it says is fairly easy to extend this to application to color images. What we have seen was the uh, black and white in the previous case. So, you will be wondering why the thing this is for the black and white. When I use the color as we uh, uh, discussed in the uh, first class of DCT that uh, it has to be represented RGB. So, we will be multiplying by 3 colors basically. So, you will be seeing that each pixel is assigned uh, uh, 3 integers for each color intensity. So, what is it here it is you will be seeing um, uh, red you can see that G R is 1 g is 0 and b is 0 in this. As you move across, so you will be seeing that something uh, here uh, dark pink what you have it which will be having both r component, red component and then a uh, blue component and then uh, green is going to be 0 in this. When you come to white you will be seeing that all of them are 1 rgb is equal to 1 it becomes white and all of them are zeros, it becomes black. Whereas, when you have only green part of it has to be represented you will be seeing that it is going to be 0 1 comma 0 here and the combination now from here to there you will be seeing that red is 0 here and then you will have the green component then then blue component which will be mixing from both ends and you will be seeing on the other side also as it is represented with the cube how uh, different colors are represented with your RGB. <coughs> So, uh, how to go with this basically a few ways to approach the image compression that is uh, repeat the uh, discussed process independently for each of the three colors and then reconstruct the image. So, we will be doing the compression in the R plane and then uh, G plane and then the B plane and then we can mix it and then do it. 
So, that is what, what it says baseline JPEG uses a more uh, delicate approach how it is done that is usually we will uh, represent with respect to luminance what is that uh, uh, coordinate to be y coordinate. So, what now how the value is going to be defined. So, you will be taking 0.299 of r plus that is you will be seeing 50 percent of the green value what you will be taking it and then the lowest is 0.114 of the blue component because green is more perceptive to our eyes. So, which is given more weightage and you will be seeing that one fourth of it is given to red and then the, uh, the blue gets the least preference. And then you will be defining the color differences coordinates. So, then we call it as y u v representation u is going to have b minus y and then v will be having r minus y. So, with luminance and then u and v component y u v what we can represent our uh, color images also. So, how it is going to be the transformation what you will be saying r g b what you have it that is this is r r g is here and then b you will be shifting to y u v system which is uh, uh, both the ways possible. So, you have been shown from here to here from y u v you can get back your r g b also that is what, what it means that it is reversible. So, you will be seeing a few of the colors that is from three dimensional what you have done is come down to only two dimensional what you have is u and v what are the coordinates with the your colors have been mapped into. So, it applies that DCT filtering independently to y u and v using the quantization matrix q r what you we can use it and then apply it and then get the result. So, how is the luminance? So, I think the bulb shows how it is going to glow correct that is what, what we call it as luminance. So, you will be seeing the quantization q y here uh, p is given these values to represent the thing. So, you are uh, um, earlier we had taken the quantization matrix basically p is equal to 1 means it is a multiple of 8 what we have taken the thing. But here you can see it is with the different p what you are representing the matrix for the quantization. And then the chrominance what you will be seeing is q c is uh, represented with this. So, you will be seeing that most of them are 99 uh, is the value what it will be going. So, you will be representing these colors using the chrominance value of this matrix basically. So, how we are going to do that? We know that human eye is more sensible to luminance that is y coordinate and it is less sensible to our color images that is u v coordinates. So, then compress more on u v and less on y consequences color images are more compressible than grayscale ones as you can see it. So, <coughs> how we are going to reconstitute the thing after compression our y u v are uh, recombined and converted back to r g b to form the compressed color image. So, blue is represented with u plus y and uh, our red is going to be with uh, v and then y and then g is going to be you are seeing that uh, y into 0.299 of r uh, minus point y that is luminance y minus 0.299 of red minus 0.114 of blue whole divided by whatever we had represented our uh, um, green with that is the 0.587 what we had represented uh, in the original uh, for the green we had given the weightage uh, to calculate luminance which is divided by 0.587. So, uh, what is it? In the equation what you will be substituting it basically what I have in the equation is this is my y. Uh, so, you will be doing 0.587 g equal to transform these into the other part of it. So, that is why you will be getting y minus 0.299 r minus 0.114 b and to get g we have to divide this by 
uh, its weight that is 0.587. So, this is how you will be reconstructing your green. So, coming to uh, comparing the compression. So, this is uh, Lena has been taken, this is the original image and then uh, if I give p is equal to 1. So, the compressed image is shown in this way and you will be seeing the other compression uh, p is equal to 4.8 basically what it is chosen instead of 4 and then you can see your Lena how it is represented and compression of 8.6 p is equal to 8.6 and you are seeing your Lena here. How much difference you are going to make out? Only you can subtract from the original image and then represent that uh, value as an image again and then you will see how much you have lost compared to the original. But still your eyes is uh, unable to unless you have a very sharp eyes where you can pinpoint that this is the difference what I am seeing from the original to the compressed image. So, this is one of the advantage of our uh, uh, human visual system. So, you can see compressed image we have done the uh, blown up of it there it was small. So, you are not uh, deviating from much of the original. So, that is what uh, one of the uh, compression advantage in image processing. So, this is uh, what we have uh, looked at by selection of P how we can do the compression and in the next class we will see uh, it is like our uh, fast FFT what we did for Fourier transform. So, we can do fast DCT using our butterfly structure. Uh, here it is not exactly butterfly, but flow diagram what we will look at it in the next class. Thank you for uh, listening to this class. We will come back in the next class for uh, DCT. Thank you.